Today we're gathered together to uh, talk with Lisa Fair about a miracle story. Um, she doesn't tell this story to everybody, but today we felt the inspiration to share it basically with the whole world. And <laughs> 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 we're taking the lid off of that one. <laughs> uh, okay, so what are we going to do? Uh, I know for me with that story that you want to tell, it feels like a really intimate story right. and uh, a parable that was given to me that, and I don't want to think that it's a special story either, but just it showed me an opportunity of a depth of my own innocence right. that I didn't know even was going to come. Right. So why don't we just go into that? And okay. Talk about that, you know, because that's really what it's about. Uh, it's the practical application of everything. So this is most powerful story, the parable that I've heard, you know, I mean, it's a very dramatic story, which isn't, it's not about, you know, stories and different levels of stories. Hierarchy of illusion. Right. There's no right. hierarchy of illusion. Right. But I think it's a very touching uh, and compelling parable. So why don't, you, why don't you just start off with sharing with us about your sister? Lisa seemed to have a sister when I was, like, in my 20s who disappeared actually and she was missing for eight years. And were you you were living were you living together yeah. at the time? We lived together at the time and she disappeared. And um, you know, we it was like the weirdest thing. I mean actually it was like a, when I look back when it was such a miracle because it like gave my mind space. Mm -hmm. You know, not knowing is hell, but it was just like this space to kinda get a grip you know, let, letting my mind separate from the idea of the sister idea. The identity. Right, right, that's what I'm saying. As a sister. Yeah. And, but when she disappeared, you say she disappeared. How long, you know, was that period of time that she was missing? She was missing for eight years. Yeah, so that was quite a... Yeah. ...kind of period of time to go into it. Mm-hmm. So actually, when they found her after eight years, it was a blessing, I felt like, from God that they found her. Because then, like, it was like the not knowing was over. Right. And so, yeah, for me, it was just like, wow, it was a miracle that they found her. And mm -hmm. so that my mind could finally stop thinking about where she was or what happened. Or yeah, so I feel like it was a blessing. Right. Like, if it had to happen anyway, it was, like, so perfectly. You know, I mean, really. I mean, if I, if I had to go through some drama story, it felt like it was very loving, actually. Yeah, that's amazing that you can look back on that and have that experience say that because eight years it seems like for most people I would think eight years would be pure hell you know trying to deal with just the thoughts that you were having which I guess you I were was in hell but that was but you were just not did you have the first of miracles then no no so this was all just you just dealing with it on your own the best that you knew how yeah yeah and at that time I've seen it now through different lenses but see at that time I was in real anger and just confusion and just you know and then finding out the the guy, like the first trial, they did find the guy, and then first trial, I was really angry about the whole situation. So you were there at the trial. I wasn't allowed in, but I was at the trial because I was one of the witnesses because I was the last person. Well, I guess what we should clear up is that okay, they so they found her. She obviously they found her body. Yeah. So she had been murdered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she so had been murdered and raped actually. So when you first got the call and you went and. and and it was uh, it was identified that it was her. Was there a sense of relief, or was it more anger because you knew what had happened to her? I was in relief. Yeah. Yeah. And then, what period of time was it from that that you that you actually started to look at forgiveness? And well, it was when the course of miracles came into my life. It was because. Uh, during that uh, first impact that the Course in Miracles came into my life, I realized it was like I did this thing of all this, how God had forgiven me and to have my innocence and have that experience. I, was, I wanted to forgive everyone. Mm -hmm. And so I looked in my mind as far as I could go back to anyone that I didn't forgive, and he was one of them. All right. You were still holding a lot of grief. Yeah, time. yeah. And so I did this thing in my mind where I just totally saw him in the present moment and just saw his total perfection and seeing that it was just some story that the ego was creating in my mind to keep me out of hell, mm -hmm. to keep me out of heaven. To keep you in hell, yeah. yeah, to keep me in hell and just, it was like, it was like it was up. Mm -hmm. 
Like, oh my God, that's what's going on here. I've been holding on to this, like trying to deny God, basically. And I saw that that's exactly what I was doing by keeping these thoughts of hatred and anger and my and my own murderous thoughts. Right. right. There were it was murderous thoughts in my own mind. Yeah. So there's a line in the course that I love. It says it says miracles instead of murder. Yeah. And it's like that's really you had to dig deep and go into that. Yeah. Really and I looked at all my hatred and my anger and the murder. What's the vibe? Yeah, you didn't put it all over there on him, which you had done for a while, which is what we. Well, I realized that it was all my own mind. That that's why I was in hell. Yeah. Like that's what was really amazing to me when the course came to me. I thought, oh my God, it is my mind that is p- possessed with these thoughts. Yeah. That's what I couldn't. And that's I had to deal with though on a personal level with your sister being murdered brutally, thinking that those are your thoughts. Well, I don't feel like I I they're my own murderous thoughts projected out on the screen. But I'll tell you right now, this is what I know, is that the value of experiencing my own innocence mm-hmm. was more valuable than even figuring out that thought. Right, right. My best job was to give it to the Holy Spirit. I don't know what anything means. Right. I take responsibility for ho- holding those own thoughts in my mind. For your experience. For my experience, so that I could stay in my experience with God. That I was seeing this experience of feeling my own innocence, that that was offering me everything that I wanted. And I was like, okay, we ain't playing no more. Yeah, you had a taste of it. Yeah, I had a taste of it, and I thought, I'm going to clean out everything in my mind that is not this truth so that I could be in my experience with God. Yeah, so then you got to step into it even further when they called you to yeah, that was testify, was it, or to, on his behalf? Yeah, well, we were having a gathering, at da- and David was there. It was really flipped out because we had, like, this, I swear to God, that we said it was, like, uh, what do they call that big gathering in New York City? You know, it was just like this huge gathering. This, like people were coming in and out, people in tents in my property and everything. It was this huge like event at my house. And here the phone rang, and David was there, and it was the newspaper, and they said, Hi, uh, you know, we're from the Harrisburg, you know, Patriot, and we're wondering what your reaction is to the fact that they're going to get Freeman May off death row in Pennsylvania. How, how what's your reaction to that? Just like a newspaper reporter, and I was with David, and we, and and it was like, oh my God, and <clears throat> it was like all this light just came out of me, and I said, listen, I'll tell you right now, I completely forgive him, and you know, in my mind, he is completely free, you know, that I don't hold anything against him, and it was funny because the reporter was on the other line, and it was like he, it wasn't a good story for him. <laughs> 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 Never mind. <laughs> and he was like. No drama oh, here. Right, right, right. Like, he wanted me to, like, we were, like, laughing hysterically. I'm like, listen, man, I completely forgive him. And I said, listen, I can totally see. I was just, like, explaining to the reporter. He's like, okay, talk to you later, Miss Fair. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, no story here. Yeah. And so then you had another call. From yeah, well, then it was really miracle because here we were at another gathering. It was right after another huge gathering, and, and here Carrie called. And she said, listen, there's this guy from the freaking FBI here looking for you at the Peace House, or it, it's in the neighborhood. I'm like, wait. She goes, listen, and it's totally top secret. He won't tell me what it's about or anything. And he's here. It wasn't the FBI. It was the government, Department of Justice for the right. Government or something. Here they found me, and here's, because uh, he, he's on death row. And they said, you know, that... Um, they wanted me to testify on. Free, he, they heard that I saw Freeman May and forgiveness through this article. Mm-hmm. So they did print the article, and somebody saw it. And somebody saw it, and they wanted to know if that. Well, I didn't have a choice. That I was being subpoenaed to testify on Freeman May's behalf on death row to get him off. Wow. How did that feel when you first? Well, I couldn't even believe it. And I couldn't believe that. Well, the thing was, it just kind of like really hit me, and then. I had to look to see if I had any thoughts. Right, anything left. Like, be really honest with myself. And if I was really willing to do this. And I'm really willing, you know, like, and also, I hadn't talked to my mom in, like, 20 years, and I just started talking to her again. And I knew that if I would do this, my whole family was right. against him. That it would actually right. yeah. sever that relationship that I just started again. Yeah, so you had to look at all those thoughts. Yeah, but my fear of her rejecting me.